how big is the largest owl in Singapore? And do you know that owls have some really weird mutant ears? Well, let's find out about that in our little red jungle. Wow, look, now you have so many plants and animals. <laughs> Throughout history, owls have always been a symbol of wisdom and knowledge. But how much do we know about the owls in Singapore? So today I'm at Pasiris to look for Singapore's largest owl. You know, to go and observe and learn more about them. So if you're ready to come along for the ride, let's go. Woo! So in Singapore, we actually have six different species of owls, all native, and the largest one we have is just right up there, and it's called the spotted wood owl. Now this species can be found in Southeast Asia, from Myanmar to Indonesia and to the Philippines. And although they are not of global concern, they are actually critically endangered locally in Singapore, with only about less than 30 individuals remaining. And this is mainly due to the cutting down of our forests, which is the main habitat of this species. Uh, but the current population that we have, have adapted well to living in our nature reserves and neighbourhood parks, even with all our human activities and noise. And thankfully, the population numbers are very slowly but surely increasing again in recent years. Now you might think that owls are very hard to spot in the day, but the species can grow up to 48 cm when they are adults. So that's just like the size of a newborn human baby just sitting on top of a tree. So they're not exactly small, you just need to know where to look. And so most of the time, you can see them perched on a thick branch in the day. But they actually also nest in the bird's nest ferns that grow on top of a lot of our trees. Which I mean it's in the fern's name, right? So if you ever want to try your luck at finding these gentle giants, just look up and peek into those ferns. Okay, so the sun is setting and I really, really want to see what these owls get up to in the dark. So you know what? It's time to whip out this big boy, my night vision binoculars. You know, buy expensive gear, don't leave it at home to rot, right? So if you're ready again, let's go. So as you know already, owls are active at night. And although I can't frame all of them in one shot because they're all spread out, there's actually a family of four spotted wood owls here tonight, which I located by listening out for their call. Now these owls usually hunt for rodents, small birds and large insects, which I think is what this one caught. Uh, at least it seems like an insect from this angle. If you don't already know, owls are some of the best hunters in the dark. And yeah, you know, they have really great night vision, as you can see from their really huge eyes. But what really gives them that itch is their amazingly sensitive and directional sense of hearing. So for some owls, they actually have these feathers popping out of their heads called ear tufts. But those are actually not the real ears of the owl. Those are feathers that serve more of a purpose of like eyebrows, where they help the owls to communicate. Instead, their real ears are these openings hidden under the feathers behind their eyes. And the cool thing is, the ears of the owls are actually asymmetrical, meaning that one ear is higher than the other. And although it may seem like some weird deformity, right, it is actually a brilliant adaptation. You see, sound travels in a pretty constant speed. And now, because their ears are at different heights, sound would enter into each ear at a slightly different timing. And just like that, they can very accurately pinpoint the exact location of where a sound is coming from, even in pitch black darkness. So for a lot of animals, even like us humans, we try to do the same thing, right? Like take for example, just half an hour ago, when I was trying to locate these owls by their sound, I was like spinning around trying to see whether the sound is from this year or that year. Then I also caught myself subconsciously tilting my head, you know, just like how a dog tilts their head when they hear a new sound. And if you think about it, it's exactly what the owls are doing, making their ears go like one higher and one lower. And it's not like we are trying to consciously calculate the mathematics of how the timing of the sound entering this year and this year is different. No, we don't do it. We just instinctively tilt our heads and our brain just automatically processes the information because it works. 
and for the owls, they evolved through millennia to have this adaptation, where they can do the exact same thing without all the extra effort. Which means they can locate exactly where a sound is coming from, all while keeping their eyes locked on a target and without having to make big movements that would reveal their location to their prey. And just like that, by being a little weirdly designed, these mysterious owls have become one of the world's most efficient and successful nighttime predators. And yeah, although you don't see them as often as your minas or your hornbills, I just think that it's so amazing that these owls call Singapore their home too. And although you can't see them, just remember, they will always know where you are. And this marks the end of this episode. But before we go, I'd like to give a shout out to our patrons. Mrs. Chu, Mr. Chu, Spotman, Sky Baby, Ying Le, Heja Queen, Kaysen, Pinghu Master, Just Juice, Jablock Tango, Amal Delo, Neko Sama, Uncle Sam, Amelia, Crooked Spider, Lo Eli, Big Three Circles, Amy, Nero and Angel, and Emmy. Thank you again for supporting this channel directly. And if you would like to do the same, you can find the link to my Patreon down in the description below. Do also follow me on all my other social media platforms and subscribe to watch more videos of our local ecology. Thanks again for watching and remember, keep your eyes peeled and your ears tilted because it is a jungle out there. <laughs> okay, bye-bye.